the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. And AJ Apple. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Applegarth. What's going on, man? Uh, not too much. Just uh, super busy at work this week. So glad to be out of the office and ready to, to talk some football. Yeah, I'm just uh, ready to do anything but take care of my Super Six son. Not that... uh. Don't love him, but I'm kind of tired of listening to coughing all day, um, and then some. So it's been it's been a lovely week. <laughs> uh, getting over my old my own sickness as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm ready just to do anything but that. So all right, man. Uh, so right now, halftime: Cowboys and Bears Thursday night football. We got Zeke with a touchdown early in the game and then a whole lot of nothing from the Cowboys offense. And then two touchdowns from the, um, uh, the, the bears offense, both to Allen Robinson. So looking, looking pretty good for Allen Robinson owners this week. Um, so first round of the playoffs, most likely for those of you who are, who made it hope you did. Um, I want to ask you though, man, how'd you do in your leagues this year? Uh, pretty good. Uh, aside from Scott Fishbowl, as we've talked about weekly yeah. for the most part, my <laughs> team sucked there, but I had a huge week last week in the tier two, uh, finished 24th, I think overall. So that was pretty solid. I'm pretty happy about that. And, uh, the Zeke touchdown tonight helps me there, but yeah, the rest of my leagues, uh, dynasty league got kind of screwy at the end one of the guys was not starting for net. And there was this whole thing that I started on the chat board about tanking and how it's bullshit and whatever. So he ended up winning, which I needed him to, but I ended up losing thanks to Tyler Lockett getting a zero. Um, and you win a lot of people. Gala- <laughs> yeah. And Galladay on my bench instead. Uh, and then Kyle Allen, on my bench instead of, of, uh, of Nick Foles, who I started. So thanks for those negative points. BDN, uh, I still love you, but, uh, not, not on my fantasy teams anymore. So yeah, that one, that one was, was a little tough to swallow, not getting in on that, but, um, I went three, three for five, I guess. Nice. Call it that. So yeah, pretty, pretty happy about it. Yeah. So I sent out the tweet, I think it was Tuesday. I'm losing track of time at this point. Um, I made the playoffs in six of seven leagues. The only one I didn't was my home league with like family and stuff, and I kind of screw around in that league. And it uh, finally, finally worked that I didn't make the playoffs. I tried not to actually. <laughs> um, yeah. So it kind of worked out. Um, but six of seven got a first round buy in in four of them. Two number one seeds, two number two seeds, and I am. Uh, in the second round of the actual Scott Fishbowl playoffs, so I actually nice. won my wild card round. So the twenty wild card teams, I was the number one, so top ten advance to meet nice. the ten bye week teams, and I actually got first place last week out of the didn't need to, but you know, so be it. Yeah, well, feels good. Still, it helps. <laughs> yeah, it's, feels, it's makes you feel good, good going too. into this week. I uh, have to hope that uh. Not a lot of people in the division in the conference round have have uh, have Allen Robinson to put me in a big hole, but uh, so yeah. be it. So yeah, we got a bunch of I got a bunch of responses to that to that Twitter uh, to that tweet. So you know, a bunch of people you know making the playoffs, a uh, bunch of number one seeds and two seeds and things like that. So it's good to see you know people that follow me and 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 the site doing well. So that's that's uh, that's pretty awesome to see. Um, yeah, man. So l- let's get to it. We've got our beer of the week. Let's get to it. Mm, beer. Uh, so I am drinking 
an elder pine. Uh, it's an elder pine. It's called Nordic Broom. And I'll be honest okay. with you, I literally have no idea what a Kevik IPA, K V E I K IPA is, but um, it's pretty tasty. Uh, it's it's definitely different. It's got like um, the hops. Uh, it says like grist or something like that. I don't even know. It's it's very it's it's a very different flavor of IPA, but it's still pretty solid. I gave it a three uh, three and three quarters on on untapped. Um, so cheers to that. Excellent, excellent. Uh, just reminded me, I need to check in my beer here. Right. Um, so I am boozing up on the Dogfish Head 75 Minute IPA. Nice. Um, not a big fan of the 60. Uh, the 90 is pretty good, but a little heavy and kind of awkward. Um, but this, they hit this one on the nose. I mean, the the perfect mix between the two. And I mean, it's just like a smoother, easy drinking beer, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of bad for for the fact that it's a seven and a half percent. So it goes down pretty quick and easy. Uh, so that could catch up at some point. Nah, you'll be all right. <laughs> so, all right, man. So ah. we've got fantasy playoffs. They're here, week fourteen. I'd say for probably about 90% of the people out there, week 14 is when when the playoffs start. Um, so I'm going to let you run the show from here on out, man. Go for it. All right. Sounds good. Well, the first thing we want to touch on here with our news and notes leading up to week 14, as we've already said, fantasy playoffs are here. So... Uh, congratulations to those of you who made it to the winner's brackets and uh, better luck next year to those of you who did not, Uh, unless you actually have something to fight for in your loser consolation brackets, uh, toilet bowl brackets, whatever you want to call it. So first thing we want to jump into here is handcuffs. Um, So basically we, we said to pick up some of these guys in some previous shows uh, but those guys that we talked about, they're already showing um, that that they're super important to own right now. So hopefully you guys took our advice. Um, first guy that we have here listed is Alexander Madison. Um, Dalvin Cook is dealing with the reaggravation of the shoulder injury that he suffered uh, back in the Denver game in week 11. Cook says he should be good to go. But I mean, what are what are you taking away from this? Are you worried about Cook's status? This yeah, week? I absolutely am. And thankfully, in all but like one league that I own Cook in, I was able to snag Madison as a handcuff. Um, so I, I'm lucking out there. I, look, he says he's gonna be he says he's gonna play. Um, I, I do worry that they're just gonna kind of protect him though, and you know, or if he just takes like one wrong hit, he's done. Um, you know, he, he was like writhing in pain on the ground when, when he got hit just this past weekend and it didn't look good, man. But like Alexander Madison clearly needs to be owned for all Dalvin cook owners. Now, if cook plays, you really can't play Madison. Um, you know, it's obviously cook who you just have to use and just hope he doesn't pull an Adam Thielen and go up. Oh, after like two plays, I'm out. Never mind. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but you know, Madison has proved that he's capable of 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 putting up good numbers. Um, now he doesn't get a lot of opportunities, but I, I put together the slide today, and I and I found four games where he had eight plus rushing attempts. And you know, you, you see here, you know, he's averaging what you know. Over four and a half yards per carry in each of those games. Uh, he's only scored with one touchdown, but I mean that's just volume. And when they get close, they use Cook or Rudolph or people like that, right? They're not using Madison at the goal line. Um, yeah. And then last week when Cook was injured late in the game, now they were like coming from behind, so he didn't get a lot of rushing attempts. But he went four for twenty-two, still a phenomenal average. 
uh, and he caught four for 51. So he, he he proves that he can do it in the in in the receiving game too. So that's that's big because uh, most of us play in PPR and have PPR leagues. So you know if for any reason Cook is out, they just you know hold him off this week and say no, just take it easy this week. Madison, you're the guy this you know for week 14. Madison is a legit like RB1 contention in my opinion. He's he's that good. Yeah. Um but yeah, I definitely uh definitely like Madison and liked what I saw out of him um last week in the Monday game after Cook went down, you know, he he was minimally involved before that uh and, and really that that was like a tale of two halves that game. It seemed like the first half was a, a lot more defense. Mm-hmm. Um, and second half, you know, really just kind of took off. Um, but yeah, Madison, Madison's definitely a good, good one to own. If, if for whatever reason, he's still out there, go get him immediately. Um, and you, you never know what's going to happen with cook. We've already talked about it in the beginning of the season that, you know, he's, been injury prone for his whole career so far Mm -hmm. up through this you know up to this year so he's definite one to grab uh the next guy we got listed here is also a you know very highly touted sleeper pick early on in the year and that's darwin thompson so he saw the bulk of the carries last week when daryl williams was knocked out with a hamstring uh and He's actually been placed on the IR as of this morning. Uh, Damian Williams is still very questionable with this rib injury that's caused him to miss week 13. So what do we think about Darwin with McCoy still around? You know, the way we've seen McCoy get used is kind of like a secondary back. And um, so... I, I think they're going to keep it that way. I think for a few weeks there when Damian Williams was having injury problems early in the year, they tried to ride McCoy a little more, um, kind of found out that that's really not going to work for them. So they switched back to Damian once, once he was healthy. And then once Damian Williams was out, they tried to go to Darrell Williams. Um, and then as soon as both were out late in the game last week, Darwin Thompson saw like 11 carries late. I mean, it was all mm-hmm. Darwin. I mean, that was it. Um, I kind of think Darwin Thompson can can thrive big time in this role. I mean, we've seen Kansas City backs do this time and time again. And, you know, late last year, right, we saw Kareem Hunt go out. It was Spencer Ware, who they have resigned, um, but whatever. Uh, and, then Dave, and then Damian Williams came on and just carried people to the championships. I kind of think Darwin Thompson can do something similar. Um, it won't be as big because they are going to mix in, sprinkle in McCoy. Just, you know, they didn't do that last year with their running backs. They didn't sprinkle in a second guy. Um, but, I mean, you're looking at some stats here on the screen where uh, the rushing game averages here is, you know, it's about 19 attempts, about seven, over 75 yards, uh, almost six receptions for 44, almost 45 yards per game. They're averaging over a touchdown a game. Both, uh, you know, if you combine receiving and, and rushing, you know, it's about 22 points per game, and that's that's half PPR league, by the way. Um, so, if Darwin Thompson could get even what 75 percent of that, he's at least an RB two every week. Yeah. Um, and if he can get more than that, if he falls in the end zone once or twice, he's an RB one easy. I think he's gonna help really help some people down the road uh, if he gets his chance here, and. Um, you know, I, I said that in a Fantasy Pros article that um, I, I, I helped contribute to the, this past week about a bold fantasy football uh, playoff prediction was that Darwin Thompson was my guy. Um, obviously, the chance has to be there. Damian Williams actually has to be out for that to happen. Daryl Williams is already out of the way. But uh, I think yeah. it's just right there. For well, the yeah, and, and really, you know, Daryl Williams was kind of the most trusted back i feel like i mean i know obviously reed and mccoy have a history but he was he was inconsistent and daryl williams just seemed to be the guy that was going out getting the plays made you know 
taking the ball and just literally running with it, uh, you know. So it's definitely a blow to to Kansas City to not have him there. But, you know, Darwin Darwin's a good back, man. I, I think he can definitely get it done once mm-hmm. given the chance, and that's really – what hasn't happened. So. Yeah. I mean, there's a big reason why everybody was on this guy, you know, late, late in the preseason, you know, he was like, he was creeping up boards big time. And then all of a sudden they signed McCoy and everybody else. And Damian Williams got healthy and he just dropped off, but people were still drafting him late. Cause it just taking flyers on him. And then he got dropped everywhere for obvious reasons. He wasn't playing. Yeah. Um, but you know, now that he's going to get his chance, I think he can be a huge, huge boost for people because, as we know, running mm-hmm. back is just a total shit show um, in, for some teams. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of shit shows and <laughs> running backs. Did I set that Miami, up Miami. <laughs> yeah, very nice setup. Uh, Miami. Uh, Kalen Ballage was put on the IR. Uh, so right now we're looking at them losing Drake via trade. Ballage coming in. Now he's gone and put on the IR. So now the running backs for them are Patrick Laird or Miles Gaskin. Or, I mean, do we even care? What do you uh, think about Miami? Uh, what do I think about Miami? Not much as far as the running game. There's There's something to like there, but it's not the running game. Um, if you have to rely on Patrick Laird or Miles Gaskin, you're in trouble, and you probably aren't in the playoffs. Um, <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to put it out there. Patrick Laird's the guy I would want. Uh, he's at least catching a lot of passes out of the backfield. He seems to be the one getting most of the work. Um, but it's not it's not sexy. I mean, they're like dead last in basically all rushing categories. Uh, on the screen here, you're seeing uh, like just the massive difference of – stats compared from Kansas City who actually by the way is like not middle of the pack they're like top third but they're like the bottom of the top third as far as like rushing teams and rushing stats on the year they're not like blowing it away like they were last year um Miami on the other hand is dead last i mean 48 yards per game five and a half receptions for 37 yards 0.3 touchdowns total per game for 13 points not good not good at all. So, yeah. I mean, deep leagues, layered, fine. Uh, other than that, I'm not trying to go anywhere near this backfield, and I hope you don't either. Yeah, it's uh, it's an ugly situation there to, to be dealing with. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I picked up layered in maybe one league just – for the hell of it see what happens if he if he does something okay cool but i don't i just don't see me starting him over any of the other guys that that i already have so so moving on we decided to have a little bit fun here with the fantasy playoffs and uh we have we each came up with our our own bold prediction for the playoffs so let's jump right into those and uh talk about that who's who or what is your bold prediction for the fantasy playoffs 2019? Yeah, so like I said, I, 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 I'm stealing, I guess, is the idea, is, is the word. But I don't know, really. I'm sure 3 million sites do this. But um, I got asked to participate in a bold fantasy football playoff prediction article on Fantasy Pros this week. And like I said, I picked Darwin Thompson. Um, There's a lot of things that have to go into him succeeding, obviously, but I think it, I think everything's set up for him to succeed. Uh, but I'm not going to say that one. I, I'll pick a different one. Um, mine's going to be Philip Lindsay's going to be an RB one the rest of the way. Um, yeah. Lindsay has had the opportunities for a while, but he just hasn't really come through. Um, since, God, what week was it? They finally decided, oh, we're just going to give all the bulk of the work to Lindsay and just kind of make Freeman a secondary back. Um, you thought Lindsay was going to blow up, but it just hasn't really happened. Mm-hmm. The rest of the way, though, he faces Houston, Kansas City, and Detroit, who all have well below average rush defenses. Um, so 
I'm I'm expecting pretty big things from Lindsay. And if you saw how this Denver team played under Drew Locke, like it's pretty solid. Like it it wasn't terrible like it was under Flacco and um Brandon Allen, is that his name? <laughs> Yeah, um, Allen. yeah. I mean, it, the offense actually was able to like move the ball a little bit better, in my opinion, than under those two. Maybe it was just like the first game. Um, defenses didn't really know how to play him, so they'll pick up, you know. But you keep the offense on the field longer, the running back and uh, you know, and everybody does better. And when you uh-huh. put in him facing good defenses or bad defenses r- r- for rushing, then it's just a recipe for success. So I, I my bold prediction, he's going to be an RB one the rest of the way. My bold prediction is, uh, Miller who just scored a touchdown for the bears. Suck at Dallas, suck at Jerry Jones. Uh, no, he's, he's not really my bold prediction, but, uh, I did start him tonight in a couple of leagues. So nice. I'm glad to see somebody not named Allen Robinson get a touchdown. Oh, by the way, I started him and Scott fishbowl this week too. So, Tier two is looking pretty good so far. Now, if the rest of my team could put it together, that would be awesome. So my bold prediction is that Ryan, the beard Fitzpatrick will be a top three quarterback throughout the fantasy playoffs. He's currently sitting just outside of the top five in total points over the last four weeks, depending on, your league settings and, and everything like that. And I've looked through a couple, mm-hmm. a couple of my leagues. I looked through the league that, um, that we use for the defense picks. Um, I, I guess that's one of your, uh, your dynasty league, maybe, or um, your, the Yahoo link. I don't know, whatever. I looked at that and I think he was around seventh in that over the last four. Uh, one of my leagues, he was at five. The other one, he was at six. So, I mean, the beard's been been balling out a little bit lately. Um, so you got to look at his schedule, too. I mean, we talked about this last week. We kind of touched on it a little bit the week before as well, just looking at the playoff schedules and trying to see what matchups are going to benefit you. So right now, he's going to be facing a banged-up New York Jets team this week. Uh, they are likely to not have Allen uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Adams, Jamal Adams Mm -hmm. and a couple of their other cornerbacks are also banged up and, and sounds like they're definitely not playing. So that's this week then. And it's in New York. So next week he travels back up to the big apple to face the hapless giants. Um, And then week 16 playoff championship week for most leagues he is back at home in South Beach against Cincinnati. And the Giants and Cincinnati are two of the league's bottom 10 teams in pass defense. So we already talked about who the hell cares about the Miami running game. There's definitely plenty of passing opportunities to be had. And I think Fitz is just going to keep rolling, man. The only The only knock on him potentially could be you know his standard interceptions but he's putting up enough yards and and touchdowns to offset it so that's my that's my super bold prediction yeah i like that one and honestly if you go through that article there are quite a few of the uh people who who they who they uh asked to contribute to this picked ryan fitzpatrick so that's that's a popular one um, you know, Devontae Parker was in there. So that's obviously, yes. you know, they like Devontae Parker, you like Ryan Patrick. So mm-hmm. there you go. I, I, I do like that one a lot. So hi right, man. Uh let's get to our injury news. There is a lot of it as always. Um mm-hmm. so we talked about Jeff Driscoll last week, but right after our show. And right after the Thanksgiving games, they put Jeff Driscoll on the IR after David Blau surprised everybody and was actually a capable quarterback. And everybody had Galladay on their bench, me included. You can raise your hand, too. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, yes. Uh, But let me ask you, do you think that 
you know, he can repeat this surprise performance and keep Galladay and Jones relevant? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think he can. And again, you got to look at, at his teams coming up. Uh, they get what Minnesota this week. So Minnesota can be uh, passed on, man. It's a t- yeah. I mean, they can be thrown on it. Xavier Rhodes has not played well this no. year. Um, and you know, coming into the season, you looked at Minnesota thinking, oh, great. You know, this is going to be a shutdown defense and blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. I mean, they're, they're good against the run way mm-hmm. more than they're good against the pass. Uh, so I, I kind of like him this week as as a bit of a sleeper, but it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on, on what these guys do to help him. I mean, yeah, we both benched Galladay because it was a horrendous matchup. And a you rookie quarterback coming in, or not rookie, but an undrafted. Oh, maybe, yeah, undrafted. Sorry. Yeah. Um, undrafted quarter. Well, yeah. So I guess he is a rookie then, technically. Undrafted quarterback, and and you didn't know what you were going to get, and then yeah. Galladay rips off that huge play. So that was like, a lot. First of play his... of the game, almost. I'm sitting there, like, just showed up to Thanksgiving yeah. dinner, my, my relatives, and I get this alert on my phone. I was like, Are you kidding me? 75 yards. I uh, yeah. That I one play like made the day. It was just like it just kept uh, going too. Okay. So I I like Blau. I, I think he can can help these guys, but we'll we'll see how it goes. I mean, he he's not going to be able to throw that, you know, 70 some yard bomb first play just, every week. I mean, he just I mean, he kept, could. He just kept just, airing just it out though. I unfortunately was not able to watch the game where I was, but like from what I could you know, from what I was understanding, he just was like airing it out. He just, he had nothing to lose, obviously. So he was just, just oh, like, I mean, Hey, I'm he, just going to take shot after shot after well. shot, man. Um, it was great. So they, they, they still lost that though. Game. It was, yeah. Yeah. It was a really good game. Um, so I, I definitely think he's got, he's got some, some upside. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then over to the New York giants, Daniel Jones, man, uh, He's not gonna play this week, most likely. Yeah, he's sitting there with a boot on his on his foot or on his ankle. Um, mm-hmm. Now, look, we we've seen we we've seen Danny Dimes, you know, do okay, and you know Tate's done okay when he's been on the field with Shepard and Slayton. You know, the passing game hasn't been a total disaster. Barkley's kind of suffered, but we're not really sure if that's because he's not fully healthy or what, or if Dana Dimes isn't just using him as much in the passing game, so that's you know it's making his numbers suffer. But we're back to Eli Manning. What is your feeling that's going to happen now that we're back to Eli and these guys? Uh, sadly, I feel like the Eagles could follow this Dallas lead here of losing again this week. I mean, Dallas has just given Philly so many chances to take over the the division and the giants have not been that good. I mean, they've played okay on offense. They're just not winning games. Um, Redskins, you know, finally had a, a quality win last week. First time in what? Five weeks at least. I don't know. So Jones being out, and Eli coming back in, I mean, I don't know what that's going to do for Tate because I don't feel like Eli and Tate were even playing at the same time this season. Um, maybe they were one not. game. They were not actually. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think that they I were. So think. Yeah, I think Jones I, came in like game three, and Tate was suspended for yeah. the first four, and then there was like a bye week, early bye week. So yeah, I don't think he played. Yeah. So you have no idea what kind of timing they're going to have. I mean, I'm sure they've picked something up in practice this week. Um, Slayton is still going to be hanging around. Uh, and I feel like he might have the most upside um, because of being, you know, one of those backup receivers that would probably do a lot of reps with Eli was while he's been the backup quarterback. Um yeah, but Slayton's had to play so much because <laughs> well, been yeah, hurt. That's so true. That, so maybe not. Um, you know, Shep, I, I, I do like 
Um, and obviously him and Eli played together uh, enough as it is. So he could be the leader right, you know, right ahead of Slayton. I think I, I, I see it going in that order, Shep, Slayton, Tate. Um, and then you got Barkley. I, I mean, the, the Eagles still have a, a pretty strong rush defense. Um, you know, Barkley is kind of a freak, so he could still get his, um, and, and maybe more so with Eli being back because you know, you know how, how much rust is he going to have? So you know, I think I think Barkley could be a good safety net. Yeah, that's my thing too. Is like I kind of think the passing game, like Shepard and Tate and Slayton, probably take a slight hit, not a whole lot, but I think Barkley gets the biggest boost here. I mean, we saw time and time again last year just how much Eli just panicked and just dumped off to Barkley, dumped off to Barkley, dumped off to Barkley, right? And maybe defenses yep. are picking up on that and they're just taking away Barkley, but Eli's still just looking for it constantly. And so we haven't seen that with Daniel Jones this year. We've seen him take more chances down the field. That's why guys like Slayton are, are being, you know, are being able to thrive and things like that. So I think there's a big boost to Barkley as long as Daniel Jones is out. So, um, yeah, that's that's where I'm going with this. But moving on to some uh, running back injuries. Good news here: Marlon Mack has returned to practice. Sounds like he's going to be targeting a return this week. Not totally set in stone yet, but it's looking good. We obviously talked about the Kansas City running backs. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll save this next one for later. Uh, Jordan Howard is still considered week to week with a shoulder injury. They're just not really sure with this guy. It doesn't sound like no anybody knows when he's going to be able to return. Um, James Conner, questionable for, for week 14. And actually, that was an old note. Um, he's out. He, he basically ruled himself yeah. out. Um, so he's, he's out. Um, Matt Breida is likely to return from his ankle injury. So Raheem Mostert get, gets a hit. Um, you know, Tevin Coleman and Breida will probably be one too, but there's always just so many, you know, people to give the ball in that backfield. It's hard to hard to kind of trust any one of them. One of them will go off, but it's like who, you know, is good yeah. good luck guessing. Um Carry on Johnson was the one I skipped and uh, you know, he's practicing again and he can return in week sixteen. Do you think he's worth a stash? Um yeah, I mean, if if you don't really have anything to lose, why not? Uh, we we talked about him potentially coming back in week sixteen, possibly seventeen. You know, at the end of the season here, regardless, once he went down with the injury. So, you know, Detroit's running game, it's even terrible. with him in there, was not good this year. Um, I don't think it's worth rushing him back uh, if 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 they don't need to. Uh, if he's healthy and he can play, great. You know, put him out there. Um, but again, this is a guy who's had two injuries in two straight seasons and missed big chunks of time. So, do you really want to risk it? You know, with him, unless you're happy enough with, you know, Bo Scarborough and and uh, McKissick. <laughs> And Ty Johnson. Yeah, I mean they're not going to make the playoffs, so I, I kind of feel you. Like, why are you going to risk, in, you know, re-injuring or whatever? Like, but sometimes it's good just to get another game or two under your belt before the off season and go into it fully healthy and you know with, you know, yeah. shaking off a little bit of that rust. But I uh, like, I guess if I was a playoff team and, and I am in a bunch of leagues, but it, uh, if I had like a total junk spot to waste, you know, to throw away, um. Then sure, I'll pick up Carry on Johnson and just see what it is. I probably wouldn't be starting him in Week 16. It's more of a I'm going to yeah. pick him up so somebody else couldn't potentially start him against me because he is capable yeah. when he's back there. Like they're going to throw to him a bunch. Um, you know, he he wasn't lighting the world on fire, but he was getting the job done. He was worth starting every week um, for the most part. Oh, yeah. um, moving on to some receivers, though, we got Julio Jones, his shoulder. He's likely to play, but he's been limited in practice all week. So that's something to keep an eye on. They could just hold him out again. The offense is still clicking without him. So, um, you know, we'll, and let's be honest, the Falcons aren't making the playoffs either. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is now unsure 
if he's going to return this season at all due to his calf injury. I mean, what a disaster, man. Like he went out, came back, and then had a dreadful game, dropped a bunch of passes, and now he's potentially not returning again the whole year. So yeah, I, I kind of laugh because uh, right before – the game started this past week in, in this in the fantasy six pack league. Um, I had Ingram go back on, you know, go back out. So I put him back in the IR. I had a mm-hmm. random spot to grab and I was like, Oh, Zach Pascal's out there. Let me just grab him and see what happens. That might be a yeah, phenomenal you're welcome, you're welcome pickup. That. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm holding on to him now. Uh, Adam Thielen yeah. still not practicing that hamstring injury is just lingering dude. So it, it's just bad. Um, you know, it, it, when Thielen is out, Cook or Madison, whoever's back there, they're just gonna eat in the receptions, man. They're using the they're using the running back more in the you know as the secondary receiver more than anything, uh, aside from yeah. um, Diggs. So, and then Juju Smith Schuster is still considered week to week, man. He's not practicing either. I think you can just freely fire up the James Washington shares if you got them. Um, really just doesn't sound like Juju's going to play this week either. Uh, tight end no. news. We got Austin Hooper. He's likely to play. He's been practicing. Uh, Greg Olson in the concussion protocol week to week. It was a really nasty hit, dude. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to just kind of shut Olson down the rest of the year. And then, uh, Evan Ingram says he's likely to play. It's, it's a risk, man, to, to run him out, to wait for him. They are playing Monday night. So, I thankfully don't have the one league I own him in. I have a buy. I don't have to take that chance. But uh, I think with the way the tight ends are this year, I think you're probably going in that direction if you have him stashed. You just got to wait and hope he plays, man, because that'd be huge. Yeah, I'm in the same boat with uh, with the league that I own him in. I, I That's the only one that I actually got to buy. Um, so I, I'm just waiting to see what he does and if he's healthy if not then you know i, I want to say i still have mark andrews so i'm okay <laughs> oh yeah i'd probably be playing andrews over ingram you're okay um yeah all right man let's get to our picks why don't you start it off with our uh highest and lowest scoring games all right well transition right out of ingram and that monday night game that's my highest scoring game this week um Philly's with Eli defense. and everything, huh? What's that? With Eli and everything, huh? Yeah. All I right. mean, Eli, Eli's had some good games against Philly in his day. So, uh, you know, he could be I, – I, I think he's going to be rusty, but at the same time, he could be rejuvenated. So it could be bad news since Philly's pass defense sucks and uh, gets thrown on week in and week out. And they just lost to the Beard and Miami. So I mean, they did just have a kicker score I, on them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it, it's yes, you let me get that. I, one I don't even. I don't know, but <laughs> you know, I think Barkley's going to have a good game. Um, Ajaye has been a non-factor. He's going to continue to be a non-factor. So this is the Miles Sanders show, and uh, you know, Alshon went off last week. I think Wentz can have a good game again and, you know, try to put it together. And then Eagles have four straight division games the rest of the year. So two against the Giants and then Dallas and Washington in between there. So if they run the table, they could very well get that playoff spot and win the division with it. So they need to be big and and win this week. Who you got? All right. Uh, So my highest scoring game is Chiefs in New England. Uh, I think we're all figuring out pretty quickly that New England's defense is not quite as good as it was for the first like 10 weeks of the season when they were playing a bunch of under 500 teams. Um, You know, we've seen them struggle, put up, you know, get a lot of points scored on them. So I think the Chiefs are going to be able to score a bunch of points. And then, you know, New England, it's not pretty, but they're still putting up points and, (coughs) <coughs> it might be a lot of James White and Sony Michelle this week because the pass defense for the Chiefs is is pretty solid. Um, but I, I think New England's going to figure out a way to put up some points, and we're going to get some some really good fantasy performances out of this game. Yeah, that's a. 
obviously a solid pick there. Uh, it's going to be a good, I, I, I almost want to say rivalry game. Um, yes. Good man. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's about there. And Andy Reid's had his fair share against New England anyways. So I like that game as well. My lowest scoring, probably fairly obvious here, going Cincinnati <laughs> at Cleveland. Um, I, I just I think it's going to be kind of a, a random shootout of garbage. So, you know, OBJ's been very bad this year overall. Mayfield's been down this year, and he's coming off of a hand injury, I believe. Looks like he's healthy to play, but um, that could still affect him. You know, the running game's been good with Chubb and and with Hunt back in the fold now. But, you know, since he got Dalton back in the fold, who cares? Um, (laughs) Their receiving core has been just, you know, totally inconsistent all year long, you know, outside of Boyd. He's been, he's been pretty good most of the season. Um, and their other guys have been good, but they're just, you never know which week they're going to be good. And I believe John Ross is actually cleared to come back now too. So yes. who knows what he's going to do, uh, if anything. And, um, yeah, I just, I just think it's going to be a brown, black and orange beat down of, defenses uh yeah <laughs> man excuse me um i knew it was inevitable to happen one of these one of these minutes here uh still i'm getting over my cold like i said all right so mine's gonna be low scoring games gonna be chargers and jags um i mean we saw how bad the jaguars offense was with nick you know nick Foles last week it showed a little life once they put in Minshew, but i don't know man Minshew seems like he's just a a glorified backup you know he he kind of lights kind of lights up when he gets put in the game but when he starts it's not really sexy it's not really that great um yeah uh you know the the chargers have looked horrific honestly like philip rivers looks like he's over the hill um it's just bad and he's just throwing too many picks he's just it's just not working so I, yeah. I think this is just going to be an ugly game, honestly, on, on both sides. Yeah, I mean, even without Ramsey there, the, the Jags still have a good, you know, front seven, still a good defense, but you know they're just not stopping people as as much as they were, you know, one to two years ago. Um, so no, they were total shutdown two years ago. Yeah, so I I agree that could be a definite letdown of a game. Cool. All right. uh, so let's go ahead and jump into our sleepers and busts here and uh, see what's up. Who you got for your sleeper quarterback? So my sleeper quarterback, man, I'm going – I'm hitting on your lowest scoring game. Uh, I'm going Baker Mayfield. Uh, I mean, the Cincy defense is just awful. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it. So um, I think he's going to be able to take advantage in this game and – and, uh, you know, OBJ is going to get his. Landry's been real good the last few weeks, so I think Landry will get his. Um, you know, Kareem Hunt out of the backfield is looking pretty nice. So I, I, I actually think that Cleveland's going to be able to put up some points in this game. And uh, you're going to get some get a good game out of Baker. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, my sleeper quarterback, as if I did not gush about him enough earlier, I'm going with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Shocker. Um, over the last two weeks alone, the beard has averaged very similar stats to what he put up against the jets back in week nine, which was a 62% completion percentage, 289 and a half yards per game and two and a half touchdowns per game. That's over his last two. What he put up against the jets in week nine, 67% completions, uh, 288 yards and three touchdowns. So almost spot on, dead on for the stats. The only difference is that he also has three interceptions in the last two weeks, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, he did not throw any interceptions against New York in week nine. Um, as I said, they could be without Jamal Adams and uh, they'll likely not have the cornerbacks, Arthur, uh, 
Molot, I believe is how you pronounce it, and Brian Poole. So, I mean, this is just going to be a field day for him. <clears throat> yeah, like I mean, we've already said it. Well, I, I do agree with that one. I like that one a lot. Um, so my sleeper running back here is Rashad Penny. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Rashad Penny looks amazing. Um, <laughs> it's straight up like he – some of it probably is the fact that he's got the fresher legs, right? I mean, that, that has a lot to do with it at this time of year. It's just, these guys that come in haven't really run the ball a lot all year long. Does it look amazing because, obviously, defenses are worn down. The other running back looks worn down. Um, and they come in, and they've got this burst of speed. It's like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't September. Like, what the hell? Who, where yeah. where do you come from? But Penny looks like that guy, right? And he's looked like he's just been shot out of a cannon. Um, you know, two weeks ago, we saw he just, like, caught fire and you kind of thought it was like a one-time thing and then monday night <clears throat> we saw you know carson go out early he came back in the game but penny kind of took advantage and they decided to like use him a lot and he just looked amazing he scored two touchdowns so um you know i get the hesitation of using penny but i don't see why not at this point like i think he's gonna be able to keep producing like this, even with Carson in the fold, they're just going to use both these guys. I mean, they want a grounded pound, honestly. That's the way Seattle's been yeah. for a long time. They want to do this. So, yeah. I, I I think fire him up, man. You're not going to regret it. No. And I when I was filling in my notes here and saw you had him listed, I had to do a double take to just see that he was actually ranked. I think it was right at 30. Uh, yeah, I was really 31. shocked to see where his ranking I mean, was. It was very, it was very close, and I was like, "All right, well, I, I mean, after the two games he's had, yeah, I get it. Carson is still there, and he's he's a stud." But they they talked about bringing Penny in and giving him his fair share here, and he's shown what he can do with it, and he's yeah. been really good. So I, mean, I get it know, though. Like I, he is facing the Rams, and the Rams is a tough matchup. So like. You know, yeah, you put him behind but, some of the guys that are going to get clear number one work. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you put him behind, like, um, you know, Snell, who's probably going to get number one work. You behind, you know, guys like that. Um, so it's tough to move him up. But I, I've got him in that, like, I've got him around 30 right now. Um, mm-hmm. I could very well put him in, like, the low to mid-20s. Um, but it, it's tough. Like, all those guys are kind of interchangeable, in my opinion. But Penny's yeah. has got an up. Penny's got the ceiling higher than these guys, but he's also got a floor much lower than a lot of these other guys. That's why. That's why I think you see him ranked where he is, because yeah. um, his floor, like P. Carroll, could just one day come out and be like, uh, "You know what? Never mind. We really like Carson. Yeah. We're just gonna run him thirty times. We're a just game. gonna go back to him." <laughs> and he's done it, and you know, so oh, yeah. it's still a little trust factor with him. Um, mm-hmm. but I think if they just use him. <sighs> He's going to produce again. Yeah. Uh, so my sleeper pick here is uh, the first handcuff we talked about, and that's Alexander Madison. You know, like we said, Cook Cook's claiming that he's ready to go, but they're up against Detroit, who is terrible against the run. So, you know, they could try to give Cook a little bit more rest, especially if the game gets out of hand and Minnesota gets up pretty big. You know, they're not going to leave Cook out there. They're going to put Madison out there. Um, and he had 73 yards on eight touches last week. I mean, that's, yeah, that's a amazing. huge chunk of yards. I, I want to say his biggest play was a 17-yard um, catch. But still, I mean, that's the, you know, all the majority of that yardage was through the air. Um, four, I think four touches for like 21 yards or 22 yards on the ground. So not a lot there. Um, but I like Madison this week. If you're, if you're digging deep. No, I, you know, I like kind of taking the chance on Madison too. Like, honestly, it, I said earlier, like you probably can't really use him. Um, I think the majority of people who have him as a handcuff to cook probably won't use him. And, you know, rightfully so, because you've probably got options better than him. Um, mm-hmm. because Cook really does just take up so much of that workload. But I'm with yeah. you, man. Like I think they're going to kind of scale back a little bit on Cook to where Madison could just, you know, one or two plays can make his day, and he's got the potential to do it. I, I love that call. Um, 
So my receiver here is James Washington. I mentioned him. I mentioned him earlier. Um, you know, Juju's likely out. Uh, he's been amazing the last two weeks. James Washington yeah. has, and obviously, uh, you know, even if Juju plays, I think James Washington has enough of a repertoire with uh, Duck Hodges that he's going to be, you know, a, a good a good uh, flex type receiver. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, Washington's been awesome. So I, it doesn't surprise me to see him get trotted out again. And, you know, honestly, they almost don't need Juju to play if he's not 100%. You know, no. he's, he's their main guy. There's no point. I mean, Pittsburgh, is they're out of it or are they close? No, dude, they're they in the wild card. They've got the uh, wild card right, spot well, right now. Uh, by yeah, the way, man. Zeke just scored a second touchdown, so uh, about 83 yards yeah. and two touchdowns for Saw Zeke so that. far with about the entire fourth quarter left. So we're looking yeah. for a big game out of Zeke like as it. well. I like it. Um, so my uh, my receiver pick here is a guy we also talked about earlier, and that is Zach Pascal. Um, like like it. we said, T.Y. is going to miss his second straight game, and now it sounds like possibly the rest of the season. So this week would be his sixth missed game on the season. And in his absence, Pascal's racked up 36 targets, 300 yards, but only one touchdown. And yeah. in weeks 10 and 11, he also had 13 of those 36 targets between those two weeks alone. But he only managed to reel in four receptions for only 43 yards. So, you know, a little bit of buyer beware, but. Probably not against Tampa Bay. I mean, no. they Pascal. suck. Uh, you know, yeah. almost yeah. worse Needless than the Eagles, or maybe a little worse than the Eagles. I, I don't know. I mean, everybody passes on them for the most yeah. part, unless your name's Nick well. They're running. Their rushing attack is the is yeah. Their run the rush defense, defense is, is like great. probably better than the Eagles. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah. So all right, moving on to bus here. Must well, be Jameis Winston. Uh, you know, I know the volume is there. And he's going to pass a lot, but I just feel like this is just one of those like sneaky spots where he's going to throw like four picks and do nothing. I mean, the indie defense is sneaky good. Um, they're not top notch, but um, you know, they're they're one of those like neutral teams that I'm I'm looking at the fantasy football today. Um, not rankings, but it's like their kind of what is it? It's like their matchup strength of schedule thing. Yeah. And uh, over the last five weeks, I mean, Indy's like right there in that um, neutral category, but they're they're a negative percent, which is good. So they're but they're not negative enough to give them like a red. So I guess they're not like top ten or whatever it is. But they're pretty damn good over the last five weeks. So be leery of starting Winston this this week. <sighs> I know you're probably rolling him out there just because you know the volume is there and he, you just hope he has like two interceptions and like four touchdowns and it's just going to all work out in the end, right? In 300 yards because that's what he does. Yeah. Um, but i also afraid he could flip the other way real quick. Yep. So my, uh, my bust this week is Mr. Russell Wilson. Um, if you take away the Tampa game from week nine, you know, the potential MVP of the league probably is still a little bit behind Lamar uh, Jackson. A little bit behind at this point? I don't think that's a little behind. I think he's very far behind Lamar at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Wilson's been pretty mediocre since week six. Um, you know, he has zero games over. That's, I wrote 250 plus passing yards. It's actually like 242. One is as high. Um, he's got a seven to four touchdown to interception ratio, and he's got two fumbles with one of them lost. You know, the Rams are much better home team than they are on the road. Uh, they only missed beating Seattle by two points in week five when they played the first time. So I, I just think that this could be another fairly down game for, uh, for Russ this week. It's a tough matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to be bad. I see what you're saying. It's not going to be bad, but, like, yeah, you're right. He's been in, like, the teens for the last, like, 
five out of six weeks. It's been kind of crazy. I didn't even know if I realized that. Um, you just kind of expect Wilson to just blow up week yeah. to week, right? Yeah, he's just a solid quarterback, though. I mean, like, he just gets it done. He does what he has to do. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, nah, I feel you. That's a good call. Uh, Com- Alvin Kamara is mine. And we're talking about guys who have kind of disappointed. I mean, Kamara's always ranked really high up there, and this is a tough one because I own him in a bunch of leagues. Um, so I'm hoping it doesn't happen. But Kamara, since he's come back from his injury, just hasn't been Alvin Kamara. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the Trubisky scramble touchdown. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That was that was good. <clears throat> I love it. Yeah, me too. Because I don't like the Cowboys, obviously. Sorry, all all you Cowboys fans, we're just not fans. I'm not. Um. <laughs> so as they all so Kamara as they all click off. So yeah, Alvin Kamara, man, like he's yeah. come back from his injury, just. He's just not getting, you know, he's not getting the full workload he was. Uh, they're mixing in Latavius Murray a lot. Now, he's seeing a lot of targets. That's the thing that's kind of saving his fantasy value. Um, yeah. I mean, 10, 10, 9, and 8 targets. Uh, last week, unfortunately, he only caught four of those targets. So, but he's not getting in the end zone. I just, you know, playing a San Fran defense, I'm just not feeling it this week with him, man. Like, look, I get it. You're starting him, but. Just know what you're getting into when you when you have him in your lineup. I, I would start him too. I mean, there's no way I would just sit Alvin Kamara unless I've got like a stacked lineup. But you probably don't. So, but just realize you've probably got to get a big game out of somebody else to make up for what you would have thought you got would have gotten from Kamara. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely nervous about him this week. Um, San Fran defense. We've been talking about them all year. They're no joke. And they, you know, followed up everything that we talked about by shutting down Mark Ingram last week. So yep. I definitely think Kamara could have a down game. Um, but the guy I like to have a down game is Aaron Jones. Uh, you know, Washington just held Christian McCaffrey, probably the best running back in the game right now, completely in check last week. And with A.A. Ron J., splitting time already with Jamal Williams as it is, you know, this just seems like a down week for him to me. Uh, It's just one of those kind of perfect storm type deals. And I I just, I'm not liking Jones this week. Yeah. Washington's another one of those like sneaky, good run defenses. It's not, you know, they'll, they'll give up some big games, but overall they've been pretty solid, especially the last few weeks. So that's not a bad call there. My receiver here is going to be Julian Edelman, and I was actually like utterly shocked to see how high he was ranked. Um, you know, I get he gets the, I get, I get that he gets the targets. So in PPR leagues, like you're gonna have an okay week, um, but I'm not expecting big things against this Kansas City secondary that's been pretty stout all year long. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, like I said before, I, I think this is going to end up being like if if New England's gonna. <clears throat> stay in this game. It's going to be by controlling the clock, running the ball, keeping the Kansas City offense off the field. And it's going to be more of a James White, Sonny Michelle. You're going to see Burkhead mixed in. You know, Edelman, like I said, will probably catch like five, six, maybe seven passes for like 60 yards. So in a PPR league, you're happy. Um, but to see him ranked in the top 10 kind of shocked me. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not totally feeling it with him. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is that I saw later in the day was Brady was a limited participant in practice today. I don't today believe the Patriots injury report elbow. ever. I, they're, yeah, they're, their injury reports are always just, I mean, let's be real. You know, Edelman's been on the ridiculous. injury report the entire season. Yeah. Okay. I, you notice I haven't mentioned him at all this year. Well, I just ignore no it. To. I just He's ignore played it. every game. I just, just... ignore it. Yeah. It's insane. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's a that's a good call there. I'm uh I'm going with a guy even higher than Edelman in the rankings, and that's Michael Thomas. Um mm. it's it's very hard for me to put him down here because I love me some Michael Thomas. But he was held to under 8 receptions and under 55 yards for only the second time this season. 150 yards, Last by the way. week. 
What's that? Under 50 yards last week, actually. Uh, correct, I see what you're saying, but though. Under, you're saying. He, for the season, he was held under eight receptions and, and 55 yards for only the second time. The first time I got it, it was I got like it. Yeah, 50, yeah. 54 yards or 50 yards or something like that. I see like it now, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this week, yes, he was under 50. This was his worst game of the year by far. Um, and as we just said, San Fran is a tough matchup, even with it being a New Orleans home game. Um, you know, that, that stadium is going to be rocking just like Baltimore was this past week. You know, this is this is back-to-back playoff type games for San Fran, you know, and they got to come back big and, and really kind of get the win this week um, to, to hold serve in the NFC. So I just think Thomas is, is going to have a rough go again. So let's move it on to defenses here and close this thing out. Yep. Uh, yeah. So mine's going to be the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I was shocked to still see them hanging out the 30% mark on Yahoo. Um, maybe that's just a matter of people aren't playing as much right now because it's playoff time. But uh, yeah, I mean, they get they get Tampa, dude. And like I said, I'm, I'm kind of off the Winston train this, this week. Um, you know, I'm still going to rank him where I rank him, but I wouldn't feel good starting him if I've got a, another option close by. I, I might take that chance and just play that guy instead. Um, cause I, yeah. I think the floor for Winston's bad this week, you know, Indy's defense is pretty solid. Um, and yeah, you know, Winston's very turnover prone. So that's what you'd like to see with a streaming defense. Yeah. So speaking of, uh, turnover prone, um, put my money on hot in the six games since their week seven by Atlanta has scored double digit points three times and the highest score of those three double digit scores was against their week 14 opponent, Carolina Uh, Atlanta has held their opponents to an average of 18.67 points per game. Uh, They've, they have 29 sacks, 10 interceptions, three fumble recoveries, one blocked kick and a touchdown. Plus, Carolina just fired their head coach. So who <laughs> yeah. knows how everything on the offense you know, or how everyone on the offense that's not named Christian McCaffrey is going to rebound from that. Um, you know, and as we said, McCaffrey even had a down game last week as it is. That ain't happening again. <laughs> but I, I okay. don't see that happening <laughs> again. Um, but I, I'm a little worried about the rest of, uh, of Carolina's offense this week. Yeah. I, I'll be honest. This was one I was totally avoiding. I, I I want nothing to do with the Atlanta defense. I mean, they had those two like monster games back to back, New Orleans and Carolina. Of course, both on the road. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot to why that happened. Like they kind of changed personnel. Um, they changed coaching. They have like two defensive coordinators now, or something random like that. Like I have no idea what they're doing. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and the uh, teams had no idea how to plan for because they didn't know it was coming. Um, yeah, teams have adjusted, I think. And so I'm kind of, I, I don't know if I totally agree with that one, <laughs> but I mean, Carolina is not like a juggernaut offense. So I, whatever, yeah. you know, I guess I get it, you know, turnovers and, and sacks. That's what you're looking for when you stream defenses. So maybe you'll get a little bit of that, but, um, you'll probably get hurt by the points because I think, uh, DJ Moore and, and, uh, obviously McCaffrey are just going to go off. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, four of those inter, four of those ten interceptions were from Kyle Allen. So, yeah, it's again it's that was that was the second could, game that yeah they had no it's idea how to, nobody he could knew. have another down game. Yeah, we'll see. So, I right, man, uh, <clears throat> that's it for the show. Good luck, everybody, in Week 14, first round of the playoffs. Um, Hope to see you back next week for week 15 in the, in the bye week after the bye week. And uh, we'll see you all then. Peace. Sounds good.